Kahe Premananda Emona Goranga Ridoya Dariya Bhola Bhaja Goranga Kaha Goranga Laha Gorangira Nahare Kahe Premananda Goranga Bhaja Sehoya Mara Prahare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Yashaiva Padambu Jabhakti Labya, Prima Vidana Padamapumata, Tis my jagan mangala mangalaya Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste Madhavirapi gopala sri kriyat kripaya jadi Tadaiva sambhaya pitva risha yusta priya janaha Shri Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Sasanatana Rupaka Gopala Raghunatha Pravraja Bhava Bapahimam Vanchakalpata Rubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyom Vaishnavi Bhyom Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gola Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So good morning, good evening, dear devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. We just finished a nice program today with a few devotees. We went to Gambira, we said the core, a few places. Um, let's see if somebody commented something in the chat. So I want to continue with our previous chapter. But I'd like to begin a chapter previous means that what we did in our last session, uh, which is the story about uh, the day that Krishna took Sanyas, or uh, as it's titled in the Bank of Separation, Beggar of Prem. And most and in our last session we mostly read. In this session, I'm based on what the devotees said, I'm thinking I'll do a little bit of both. But first I'd like to begin with uh, some looking back a little bit some reflections and just inviting devotees if anybody has any any reflections or questions or any thoughts about the last session before we would go ahead and start does anybody have anything questions or anything about the last session okay good so we'll go ahead and start then Hare so Hare Krishna the Nandarani yes Prabhu Sorry about that. I came in at the last minute. No problem. I, I, uh, please accept my patiences. I uh, just wanted to uh, check something with you. Um, and maybe it is has been a reflection since the last class. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'd like a little more detail about it. But I've been thinking about how sometimes when we hear these pastimes, and we hear about, for example, the different moods between Radharani and Chandravali. Obviously, it's all in a very pure uh, state. And, you know, we can't understand how dedicated they are and how much um, of love they have for Krishna. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that I felt was that up to that point where we read the pastime, I always had a bit of a negative sense about Chandravali, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to share that because it felt almost like we have this inclination to promote um, things about Radharani. And I know that, you know, 
But it's almost like Chandravali is presented as, um, you know, in a bit of a negative way. So I wanted to get your <laughs> your clarity on, on that. I hope it's not a controversial topic, but at any rate. Mm-hmm. And then just to move away from the actual personalities of Radharani and Chandravali and go up, go back to a bit more of an abstract idea in terms of the mood um, of assertiveness versus passive, you know, just how we then take um, not their moods, I don't mean their moods, I mean just in our own Krishna consciousness. If we are in more of a sort of passive frame of mind, if I can put it that way, does it mean that we lose out on getting mercy if we're not assertive enough? So those were my two points, Prabhu. Hmm. Okay, two very different points. Um, well, first of all, I, I, let me tell you a little story. Uh, there was once uh, one little boy who was, I don't know, five, six years old, and his father was a, a coach for a swim team. And uh, the little boy was visiting his father, and the swim team had just won some match or something. And out of respect and appreciation to the coach, they, they were all getting ready to pick him up and throw him in the swimming pool. And the little five-year-old boy who was there thought that they were attacking his father. And he started punching them and, <laughs> and like that. And the father was trying to say, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Don't do like that. So sometimes we pick sides like that little child, who was me, <laughs> five years old. Well, sometimes we pick sides, but we don't really understand what's going on if some from some perspective it looks like you know my beloved father or mother whoever is uh, being criticized but there's something much much deeper going on so it's not unnatural for Gaudiya Vaishnavas to lack appreciation for Chandravali in fact in some ways it, it's rather encouraged <laughs> there's a story about uh, Raghunath Das Goswami that every day he would take just a little bit of buttermilk and it was just a, something was made in a leaf cup so the devotees wanted to uh, give him a big leaf cup and there's a place called Saki Stali and Saki Stali is a place of Chandravali and there happened to be a tree that had really big leaves <laughs> so they, they made this big leaf cup out of, out of one of the leaves from Saki Stali so that they could offer Raghunath Das Goswami more buttermilk so Raghunath Das, <laughs> when he saw this, this, this uh, buttermilk cup, he asked him, where is this from? And immediately he knew. So, and, and they said, well, this is from Saki Stali. And Raghunath Das Goswami became furious. He said, I'll not take it, I'll not have anything to do with Chandravali. <laughs> you go, go away. Because Raghunath Das Goswami is Tulsi Manjari in Krishna Leela, and he's very much on the side of Srimati Radharani. But, like the, the example I gave of myself as a little boy and my father, we hear things like this and then we may think, oh, I'm against this team, I'm for this team. But we don't really know anything. We haven't really joined any team yet. <laughs> We're still uh, trying to get rid of an artist, still trying to, to become Nishta and our Bhajan, and, and it's a bit of a joke. At the same time, um, these writings are there from our Goswamis, and they should be there. And we should have some understanding of it. We should develop some understanding of it. And we should know that our understanding in the beginning is just theoretical. Because this, the Bhagavatam itself is a Bhava Granta. Maybe we were speaking about this in our last session. It's not just something about Siddhanta, but it's a book of emotions. And it's not just like, like Ishopanishad or some Upanishad, which is meant for us to understand some philosophy and things. And there is philosophy in the Bhagavatam. But ultimately, it's meant to understand Bhav. So, we should understand that philosophically, what the mood is and things, but we should, philosophically, we should understand also that I don't have <laughs> that bhav, 
right now and and, and it, I'm just an intruder it's just like a, if you wanted to, to go to some party of some Hollywood personality or something like that and decide this person is, is my hero or my friend or something you can't just walk into the party you can't just become a member of the party and we can't just walk into Radha Krishna Leela and say here I am <laughs> and I'm ready to join up with, with the Leela it just doesn't work that way but at the same time it doesn't mean that we shouldn't understand something about it in a philosophical way but we should be careful uh, Chaitanya Prabhu is commenting that he loves the difference in the mood between Radharani and Chandravali where uh, Radharani says Krishna belongs to me and Chandravali says I belong to Krishna so as far as your other comment goes about being assertive well again it's a matter of relationships and we can I, I've seen in the, the best relationship I, I can have some understanding about maybe is the relationship I saw with my Guru Maharaj and different devotees and that I had myself and some devotees they come to such a personality and they're afraid I'm sure it's the same thing with your Guru Maharaj some devotees are afraid of him and they want to keep away from him and they just want to fold their hands and bow down and that's their understanding of what's appropriate and other devotees they have a perhaps a deeper understanding that no he's a person and he likes personal exchanges and things like that he likes something natural and relaxed and there's truth to that but we can't just show up and slap Gurudev on the back and say yo dude how's it going man <laughs> you know here I am <laughs> and just try to I imitate some <laughs> something there should be both things there right? Guruda Suridarida Guruda Saiva I think is what uh, Prahlad Maharaj says that we should have an attitude a firm friendship toward Gurudev it's not the, I'm, not, I'm not getting a Sanskrit but it's something Guru Sorido, so it means friend. We should have an attitude of firm friendship for Guru. But firm friendship is something we have to develop. You have children, and as children grow older, you, they'll have more of a friendly relationship with you. But it's not that, that all of a sudden they just start calling, they start saying, your, 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 your oldest boy says, Hey, Nandarani, how's it going today? You know, or <laughs> something like that. He doesn't just call his mother by, by her name and just decide all of a sudden. So we should be assertive, yes. It, we want something, but again, this is in a, in a relationship. And relationships are personal, and, and we have to touch the heart of somebody. We have to act in a natural way. Is that helpful? I mean, a lot could be said on, on these points. These are, they're good questions, good points. Is that okay, Nandarani? Yes, yeah. for now that's very good. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. It's very thoughtful. So, um, let me just speak a little more philosophically, and uh, I'd like to go on to some more of the Leela. In the Gita, in the 18th chapter, in the second verse, Krishna describes to Arjuna what is sannyas. Kamyanam karmanam nyasam sannyasam kavayo vidu sarva karma phala tyagam prahus tyagam vichakshanaha. Uh -huh. He says that, that, that sannyas means kamyanam karmanam nyasam. Yeah? Nyasam mean, means to, to give up, uh, to renounce activities which are with kama or, or with personal desire. Mm -hmm. This is the meaning of sannyas. So then the natural question comes with Krishna how? <laughs> Krishna is everything. Krishna, he's completely self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't have any, any lust. This is the, the purport to the story of uh, Krishna Nitya Brahmachari, which appears in some Upanishads, how Krishna's internal Brahmachari, and I don't want to go through that whole story right now, but uh, I will touch on it very quickly, that uh, Krishna once, the gopis once asked, Krishna mentioned something about his guru. And the gopis said, oh, who is your guru? And uh, Krishna told them that, um, his name is slipping my mind, that uh, 
That's what happens when you sleep for three hours. Uh, I have such and such person who's my guru, and the gopis wanted to meet him. How can we meet him? Krishna said, well, he's on the other side of the Jamuna. Well, how can we go there? Well, Krishna said, well, you just say this mantra, and the Jamuna will part ways water for you, like the water parted from Moses, and you can cross over. What's that mantra? Krishna Nitya Brahmachari. Yeah. So <laughs> they chanted that mantra, and the water parted, and they were able to cross over, and they met Dravasa Muni, Krishna's guru, and uh, they brought so many foodstuffs for Dravasa Muni, and they brought like hundreds and hundreds of pots of food stuff, and just Dravasa Muni just sat down and ate all of it in like just a few moments. And then the gopis had to go back, and they asked Dervasa Muni, how can we cross back over? And Dervasa Muni said, you just chant this mantra. Oh, what mantra is that? That uh, Dervasa Muni, he only eats kusha grass. He doesn't take anything. <laughs> the gopis had just seen Dervasa Muni <laughs> eat enough prasadam for like a hundred people. And, and they, they went and they chanted the mantra, and the water parted, and they went across. So it was very mysterious to them. So they went to Krishna and they said, look, what are these mantras that you're giving us? You're not a brahmachari. We know you. <laughs> and Dervasa Muni definitely eats a lot more than just kusha grass. He has a whole lot to eat. What is the meaning of this? And then Krishna explained to them the deep philosophy behind it, that Krishna is a brahmachari because a brahmachari means brahmachari iti brahman achar. The that someone who's situated in the achara, the behavior of Brahman, where someone who, uh, as in the Gita, Krishna says that na sochiti na kamsiti samasaveshi bhuteshu, that the, the, the meaning of, of being on the Brahman platform is you don't lament, you don't hanker for anything, you treat everyone in an equal way. So Krishna said, I, I, I'm a brahmachari. I, I'm not acting on my own lust. Krishna has lust. The gopis also have lust. But it's very, very difficult for us to understand. As we were commenting in our last session, Atmavan Manmate Jagat, we see things through our own perspective. And Krishna has lust. His lust is, he's very, very lusty to please the gopis. And the gopis have lust. Their lust is they want to please Krishna. And that's all they want to do. They want to please each other. And that's their, their deep, heartfelt lust. So in that sense, Krishna is always a brahmachari. Because he doesn't want anything for himself. And in that sense, Krishna also can take sannyas. Kamyanam karmanam nyasam sannyasam kavayovidu that learned persons, they understand that sannyas means this thing, kaminam karmanam nyasam, means giving up all activities. Uh -huh. That's the meaning of sannyas. So we spoke something in our last session about man banjana lila. It's a very, very deep subject matter. It's a postgraduate topic, but there is nothing wrong with studying something postgraduate. Otherwise, Srila Prabhupada would have told us, don't read teachings of Lord Chaitanya, and definitely don't read Krishna book or Nectar Devotion. But he didn't do that. Rather, he wanted everyone to read those books and to be able to quote them and understand them. So there's nothing wrong with studying a postgraduate subject, but we should approach it in the proper way. Not in a sentimental way, not in, in, in a fantasy kind of way, thinking that I'm, I'm ready for this, but in a way that I'm just that I should understand what, what lies ahead of me. Otherwise, how will I make progress on this path? So we wanted to understand something about Man. Huh? In Ujjalina Mani, Srila Rupa Goswami, he says that there's four different types of separation. Purvaragas, Tathamanas, Prema Vaichitya Mityapi Prabhasas Katitamhyata Vipalambas Chaturvida. So there's four types of separation. Vipalambas Chaturvida. And that begins with Purvarag, before Radha and Krishna meet. They've heard about each other. And there's different examples of that. I'm not going to go so much in that direction today. We might go more into it later. And the second is Man. Man, 
as we mentioned in the last session, I think is two types: is hoitiki man and ahoitiki man, anger with a reason and anger without a reason. And as we commented, uh, every husband can understand. God gave women the right to be angry for no reason. And sometimes Radharani's angry at Krishna because he did something bad. And sometimes she's just angry. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and that's something which actually Krishna gets pleasure from. And we also spoke a little something about that. And there's Prema Vaichitya. Prema Vaichitya means a kind of madness when the lover and the beloved are actually together, but they're feeling separation. The example that my Guru Maharaj gives is, is at Prem Sarovar at Barsana, when Radharani is sitting on the lap of Krishna and a bumblebee comes uh, buzzing around her lotus-like eyes and Madhu Mangal drives it away with a stick and then proudly proclaims that Madhu Sudan is gone. Madhu Sudan means a bumblebee. But Madhu Sudan is also a name for Krishna. And when Radharani hears that comment, then she thinks, oh, my Pranavalabha Krishna is gone? What's happened to him? And she starts crying in separation, and her tears uh, begin to form this lake Prem Sarova. Krishna sees her crying. He also begins crying in the same mood. And the, the tears of the divine couple make that pond Prem Sarova. So they're together. She's sitting on his lap, but they're feeling separation. This is called Prema Vaichitya. And if we ever give some discussion uh, from the book Matur Meets Vrindavan, or, in, or Lita Madhav, which is the final section of that book, uh, we may speak something more about Prema Vaichitya. It's a very amazing condition, and that book gets a lot more into it. Uh, and then the fourth is Prabhas, and Prabhas is of two types. Prabhas means from a distance. It's Dura Prabhas and Sudura Prabhas means. Dura Prabhas means intense, when Krishna goes to Kamyavan for the day, and the gopis don't know, are we going to see him again? It's been three, four hours, we haven't seen him. That's called Dura Prabhas. But Sudura Prabhas, very, very intense separation from a distance, is when Krishna goes to Mathura or Dwarka. And the gopis don't know, are we ever going to see him again at all? So the book and Banquet of Separation is meant to help us to understand this mood of separation. And why this mood of separation, as Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport, is the treasure of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It's something that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. What does it mean when we say it's a treasure? It means it's something very valuable that he's come to share with us. It means that it's something that we can get. And in the, this Sudura Prabhas is the most intense type of separation. We can't uh, begin to understand it. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can uh, understand some uh, pervarag, some separation in the beginning. But even that, for most of us, is going to be a very high thing. But as one devotee once asked my Gurmash, he said, you always say that we should cry for Krishna, but that seems very theoretical. How can we do that? And Gurmash replied, after I leave this world, then you'll be able to cry. So we say that Saksha Dharitvinasta Master Shastra. I don't know Krishna, but I know Gurudev. And he's a manifestation of Krishna for me because he's giving me Krishna Bhajan. He, he, in that sense, he is Krishna because Krishna and his name are non different. So uh, when I feel separation from Gurudev, I'm feeling separation from Krishna also. And in the case of Gurudev, we may feel Dura Prabhas, when Gurudev goes away and he goes to some distant country, and we, it's been, we may not see him for a few weeks or even a few months. And then there's Sudura Prabhas, when Gurudev leaves this world, and we don't really know, am I ever going to see him again? So just as there's four types of separation, there's also so four types of union. And without getting into that, uh, the fourth type of union is called Samridhi Man Sambhog. Uh, Samridhi Man means fully enriched. It's fully enriched union. And that Samridhi Man Sambhog is what takes place after Sudura Prabhas. When you, and this is found in Lita Madhav, and uh, 
It's a very inconceivable book. <laughs> Anybody who starts to read this book, they, they like, at a certain point, especially when they read about Radharani committing suicide, usually devotees put it aside and say, oh my God, what? <laughs> How do I understand this? But this is the whole point of the book, that even though Radharani, Krishna's left Vrindavan, and it seems like Radharani's never going to be able to see him again, and in separation she commits suicide, and of course there's no question of Radharani committing suicide, she has an eternal spiritual body. Uh, she goes to Surya Dev, and he, and he gives her to his devotee, uh, and I, I couldn't hear what you said. Satyajit, and she becomes known as Satyabhama. And that's a whole another thing. But finally, Radha and Krishna are united together. That's Samriti Mansambhog. When the, when the union is impossible, when it's completely impossible, how can we meet him? Gurudev again. Gurudev has left his body. Gurudev has left this world. How is it possible to meet him again? But if, we, if that happens, that thing which is completely impossible, that's fully enriched union. So that's dependent upon uh, Sudura Prabhas. So it's important for us to understand something, at least theoretical, about these subject matters. As we commented in our last session, I have heard from some senior, from some disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta forbid the devotees from speaking about Radhakrishna Leela in public, but then he said, but you can speak about pastimes of separation. That's legal. Because pastimes of separation between Radha and Krishna mean Gora Leela. When uh, Krishna and Radharani are feeling intense pangs of separation from each other, so much so that the lover and the beloved become one, that's Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So in our last session, we read from the second chapter. And I'd like to ask everybody again, and this time, did anybody actually read this uh, chapter yet? Anybody? Okay, thank you, Nam Sankirtan Prabhu. Brishabhani, you've read it before, I think, right? Krishna Balan Prabhu, did you read? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Nandarani? Sorry, Prabhu, I missed your question. What did you ask if we read? Did you get a chance to read the second chapter of Embankment of Separation? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Anybody else who also had a chance to read it? Chaitanya Prabhu or Krishna Kron's here? She, she read through it. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate it. I hope it wasn't too much of an austerity. I have a feeling it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty uh, astonishing chapter. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to continue where we left off in our last session. We were hearing about this Manabhanjana Leela and about how Radharani became very angry with Krishna because Krishna went to the Kunj of Chandravali and Radharani then forbid him from coming to see her. And then Krishna, not knowing what to do, he took shelter of Brinda Devi. And Brinda Devi said, yes, I know what to do, but uh, it's not such a simple thing. You're going to have to give up this Gopavesh, the dress of a cowherd boy. You're going to have to shave your your head. You have to give it a peacock feather. Uh, you'll have to put on saffron. You'll have to give up your flute. Uh, instead, you'll have a kanjani, like a tambourine kind of thing. And you're going to sing a song about being a beggar of Radha Prem. And if you do this, then there's some hope that you can meet with Radha Rani. Could I have your, your keyboard, Krishna Kong? Is that easy to get? And then uh, Brenda Devi, she taught Krishna this song. Shimati Radhe Bodo Abhimani, Pamya Baba Shiro Mahani, Shama Sari Yangi Achadana, Tava Tapta Kanchana Kavarana, Eta Dina Chile Pogalini Roy. Kanu premis prana sampi Saiva rupe gune ogo gandharvi ke Kanu mana kori churi Ajirada prema bhikshu magi Kanu feri dwari dwari hoi O Radha, 
you've developed this sulky mood. Shimati Radha Bodhu Abhimani. You've become a big Abhimani. <laughs> Bhamya Bhava Siromani. You're the crest jewel of the leftist mood. Mm -hmm. And you have, generally you wear a blue sari and you have this color of molten gold. And uh, you've been crazy after Kanu Prem, Krishna's love. And Gandharviki Radha, in every, in every way, you've stolen Saiva Rupi Guni Ogo Gandharviki, Kanu Mana Kori Churi. You become a Churi, you become a thief. You've stolen the heart and mind of Kanu Krishna. But Aji, Aji today, now Aji Radha Prema Bhikshamagi. Now Kanu has become a beggar. Kanu Feri Dwari Dwari Hoi. And he's going from doorstep to doorstep begging Radha Prem. So this is a very, uh, this is a very, uh, very high thing, but it's something very, very important for us to understand. We want to understand Garanga Mahaprabhu. And Garanga Mahaprabhu means Krishna in the mood of Radha. Garanga Mahaprabhu means that it, it, it's it, Garanga Mahapa was Krishna's pastime illustrating the superiority of Radharani illustrating the superiority of being a devotee it's a very very deep thing to understand and this is the Arkresh jewel we want to understand the mood of the Lord and in another sense this entire book and banquet of separation is all about is about helping us to understand this mood. And my grandma has once commented that if you want to understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have to understand Radharani. And because if you don't understand Radharani, you can't understand Krishna. So when Krishna came singing that song, Alita and Vishaka, they heard that song and they said, Wow, where did you learn this? He said, Oh, I have it from my guru. Her name's Gandharvika. And then Vishaka asked him, why have you come and what do you want? And he said that I'm a sannyasi. I don't want anything in this material world, right? Sannyasam, uh, uh, Krishna says in, in the uh, Gita. Uh, sannyasam, uh, kaminam kamanam, uh, nyasam sannyasam kavayobadi. Sannyas means to give up all types of desire. So Krishna said, I don't want anything from the material world. I've given up everything because I'm a beggar of praying only. Prima Bhikshari. This also is meant to help us to understand the meaning of sannyas in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It's not about Vanashram. Mahaprabhu, he says, Naham vipo na charanara paiti naipi vaishyo na sudo naham vanya jagriha patino vanastri yatriva kintu pro janakila paramananda pranamita there gopi bartahu kapada kamali or dasa dasa dasa. He said that, that I'm, I'm not a Brahman, I'm not a sannyasi, I'm not a Brahmacharya, I'm not a Grihastra. I'm just a servant of the servant of the servant of the gopis. So this uh, story is helping us to understand how Krishna is a servant of the gopis. And it's illustrating that, that the love that Srimati Radharani has is so powerful that it makes Krishna want to give up everything. It makes Krishna want to give up everything in the material world. He becomes mad, and he just wants to beg this prayer from Srimati Radharani. That's a renunciation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that's sannyas in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It means that we become a beggar of prayer. And as an introduction in our last session of this chapter, we read a few excerpts from my Guru Maharaj's diary, where he was reflecting on this Leela Kirtan about Krishna becoming a sannyasi beggar. Uh, it's one of the Leela Kirtans which is sung in Gadagiri by Damodar Giri Prabhu and the devotees there. And he was reflecting on this, this, this uh, pastime and praying to Gopal that, my dear Gopal, please let me become a sannyasi beggar like that. Let me become a beggar of prem and let me distribute that prem to everyone. This was his desire, not just a desire to give up family life because it's a shackles, it's a bummer and... <laughs> Women are Maya and children are Maya. And all. That's not the mood of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. The mood of Gaudiya Vaishnavas is that they, want, they become so absorbed in the desire to, for this prema that they just become a beggar for that. 
So then Vishanka tells this sannyasi beggar that, yes, my Saki is very distressed. Uh, we don't know what her situation is. Can, can you tell us what is the fortune of her? He says, yes, I, I know how to, who, how to do that. Well, who taught you? Well, my guru, Gandharvika, she's taught me all kinds of things. So you please come then to the, the Kunj of our Saki and uh, by my Saki's blessings, you'll definitely get prema. And that sannyasi Thakur said, yes, why not? Huh? I must go because I'm very greedy for that thing. And so they took the sannyasi taco in, and then Vishaka asked him, would you please sing that nice song again? And the sannyasi taco, Krishna, said, yes, that's my favorite song. And he started to sing this again. Aji Radha Prema Bhikshya Magi Kano Fiddi Dwadi Dwadi Hor. That Kano has become a beggar moving from door to door begging Radharani's love. And when Krishna spoke like this as a sannyasi beggar, those words entered into the ears of Radharani. Then immediately, the crying mood came out from her heart. And this is what we left off with in our last session. And then Radharani said, Aslisava padavatam pranastumam Adarsanam mamahatam kurotuva Yatatata va vidadatu vampato Mat prananatastu saeva napraha Let him do whatever he likes because he's a lumpata, he's a debauchee. He may embrace me, he may kick me. Darshan mama hatam karotuva, he may give me darshan. He may not give me darshan, but still he can do whatever he likes because he's my prananat. My prananatas tu saeva napra, he and no one else. So Guru Maharaj, I'm gonna start reading a little bit now again. This is the last verse of Mahaprabhu Shikshastakam, and it came out from the core of Radharani's heart. Then Lalita consoled her. Oh, my Pranasaki, be pacified. Have patience, have patience. A nice sannyasi Thakur has come. He knows everything. He's Sarvagya. He'll calculate your fortune, whether you can meet your Pranavalaba, the Lord of your heart. After carefully arranging two seats on the veranda of Radharani's kunj, Lalita requested the sannyasi to take a seat there. Then Radharani came out from her inner chamber. She was wearing a veil over her head because she never looks at the face of any male person. No male but Krishna can see the face of Radharani. Lalita made... What does that mean? That means that only... Krishna can understand Radharani. Only Krishna can see Radharani's face in tattva. Lalita made her sit down on the other seat, just in front of the sannyasi Thakur. Then Lalita held out Radharani's left hand to show the sannyasi Thakur. Oh, sannyasi Thakur, she said, please calculate the fortune of our prana sakhi. Sannyasi Thakur said, please excuse me. I am a sannyasi. I can't touch the hand of any lady. No. My sannyas dharma will be broken. How can you calculate it? I can calculate your sakis fortune by seeing the lines on her forehead. I know how to do it. Remove the veil and I'll calculate. Then Lalita said, O oh, sannyasi talker, you see, our saki never looks at the face of any Peru any male in this world. She's very strict in this matter. The cheating sannyasi replied, Are Baba? I am a Dandi sannyasi, don't you understand? I have no desires. I have given up everything. I'm only a beggar, begging love. I'm a prema bhikkhari. Why is your Saki ashamed to remove her veil before a Dandi sannyasi? If your Saki lifts the veil, there's no harm at all. Then I can calculate. I'm a sannyasi. I'm not an ordinary male. When Lalita removed the veil, immediately, Shamatri Banga Lalita, Krishna's form came out. The sannyas form disappeared, and he was standing in a graceful threefold bending form with a flute, a peacock feather, yellow garments, and nice ornaments. Then Krishna's eyes fell upon the eyes of Radharani, eye to eye union. Immediately her sulkiness disappeared. Lalita became amazed. What is this? This is what Roy Ramananda saw when Mahaprabhu showed him his real form. I want to comment in this regard too. Um, 
Embankment of Separation was put together primarily by Prem Prayojan, so you may know him, and by my godbrother Raghava Pandit Prabhu. And uh, I had a little something to do with the book over the years. We've reprinted it a few times and some editing in it. There were some serious mistakes in, in previous versions. And we've even added some material to the, the new book, which we'll discuss in uh, these sessions we're having now. But one thing that's really astonished me is how the book fits together, all the materials, the different random lectures. And Gormars didn't give them as a series. They were done over a period of a number of years in different places to different audiences. They weren't consecutive at all. But the whole book really, really works together just like it was something meant to be. Uh, because at this point, I'm making this comment because Gurmaj says at this point, after speaking about this idea union of Radha and Krishna, and how when Radharani saw Krishna, his sannyas form disappeared and in this tree bunga form came. Because Vrindavan Das Thakur says, Jai Rupa Chinche Dasi Se Rupa Hoy. According to the mood of a devotee, uh, the Lord manifests a corresponding form. And Radharani doesn't want to see Krishna as a sannyasi. She wants to see Tribhanga Lalita Krishna, the beautiful Krishna, in his threefold bending form. So when Radharani comes before Krishna, when she sees Krishna, then that sannyasi form will go away. So then Guru Maharaj comments, he says, this is what Roy Ramananda Sala Mahaprabhu showed in his real form. Now this is amazing to me because later on in this, in this book, we're going to be hearing about the, the vision of Ramananda Roy and what it is that he saw. And the end of this whole book very much fits together. And Ramananda Roy describes, you know, go ahead and sing this. Pahile de kilan toma sanyasi swarup, evi toma deki hoi shama gopalu. Ramananda Roy told Lord Sri Chaitanya, at first I saw you, you appear like a sannyasi, but now I'm seeing you as Shamsundar, the cowherd boy. Roy Ramananda saw Shamsundar. As soon as the sannyasi form disappeared, Krishna's uh, Shamsundar form appeared. Roy Ramananda's Vishaka Saki Braj Lila. So he's seen these things. Tomara Samuki Deki Kanchana Panchalika. Tanra Gora Kanchi Tomar Sarva Anga Daka. Mm -hmm. So that I saw you like a golden doll, and your entire body seemed to be covered by a golden luster. Tahate prakata dekon sovang sivadana nana bhavi chanchala tahi kamala nayana. Now I see that you're holding a flute to your mouth, and your lotus eyes are moving very restlessly due to various ecstasies. Krishna told Srimati, O oh Radhe, you are Krishna Ahladeni. All your leelas are meant for my pleasure. You don't want to touch the body of anyone but me. Similarly, I don't want to touch the body of any lady but you, Radha. Sometimes I go to Chandravali's kunj just in order to heighten your bamya bhav. Thereby your leftist mood is, un is heightened and I get some pleasure out of it. Now the highest mood has been expressed today. I could not find any other means to break your sulkiness. Therefore, I put on this sannyas vesh and become a beggar. Prema Bikari. Uh, this is an important point I'd like to just touch on. For us, again, this is very high philosophy. This is very high lila. We may think I, I have no entrance into this. But we see that sometimes Gurudev he has certain people that he, uh, in his Sangha, that he gives services to, that he gives some position to, and sometimes it's very difficult to understand why it is that, that that's done. Mm -hmm. But Gurudev, he behaves in such a way to uh, increase the, the mood of the devotees. Gurudev is acting in a way to give Krishna pleasure. Once my Guru Maharaj, someone asked him some question, uh, it, 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 the answer he gave would have been a perfect answer, I think, to if someone had asked, how is it that Krishna allows the Russian army to invade Ukraine? <laughs> Guru Maharaj says, I don't know, that, that wasn't the question, but it was something to that effect. And Guru Maharaj's comment was, he says that 
uh, this world is just like a football match. And sometimes the ball is with this team, sometimes it's with another team, sometimes the ball is up in the air, and Krishna is watching it and getting pleasure from it. Similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Kalina Kalpa Taru, Krishna is getting some pleasure because there's a big drama. And there's a huge, huge drama. And, and the biggest drama means when somebody apparently is dying. But Radharani's not dying. And nobody dies. And Krishna doesn't think that anybody's dying. And we shouldn't think that anybody's dying. But Krishna, he's getting some pleasure seeing, not, not from that drama, but he's getting pleasure seeing how the devotees behave in that situation. Yes, Krishna Krum. Okay, so you like that. <laughs> and that's, that's the drama. Krishna becomes so very, very pleased by seeing that thing. So sometimes Krishna actually puts on something for a purpose, just like we have the example in Gauri Leela of Ramachandra Puri, who was such an obnoxious person. He was trying to find fault. He was criticizing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees. But that same Ramachandra Puri is Jatila in Krishna Leela, according to Kavi Karnapur. So Jatila's purpose is to uh, give some mm, uh, opposing element in Krishna Leela, because without that opposing element, there can't really be rasa. And Krishna gets some pleasure from that. So therefore, in Kalina Kalpatru, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says that... that uh, mm, yeah, it says a Lila Pushtikari that the purpose of the demons in Gaur Lila is to nourish the Lord's pastimes. They're there. Otherwise, where where is the, the question of, of any glory? So we, we should understand that. And we should understand what why Chandravali is there. And this has some relevance for us. We may then understand also why it is that we have to go through different problems and things. Once I came to my Guru Maharaj to give you an example, a uh, personal example that I think you can probably all of you have had a similar situation. I went to him and I said, Guru Maharaj, you told me I should make this Krishna Katami magazine and I, I know you want it. I believe Prabhupada wants it and our previous Acharyas want it. I think it's very good, it'll be very helpful. But what I don't understand is why is it so hard? Because it would take me a, a week to express to you all the, the obstacles that I found in doing that service, and it was so hard. And when I said that to Gurmaj, he got this kind of stern look on his face, and he leaned back in his chair, and he nodded his head, and he told me, he said that Gopal wants to test you. So love means there's always going to be some test. Just like a, a boy comes to a girl and says, hey, I, I love you, baby. Uh, but if uh, uh, the girl is wise, she's going to test that love. Oh, is he saying this to every girl that he meets? Huh? Is that love going to stop at a certain point? So we're always being tested. And that's something that's being expressed also indirectly in this pastime. Previously, when Radharani was crying, Lalita told Krishna, one day you'll have to cry like that. And so now he's always crying in the form of Mahaprabhu. So this is so important. We should understand what is the crying of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is how Krishna has to cry. Krishna has to cry and become a sannyasi, begging for Radha Prem, the love of Radharani. Otherwise, I cannot pay back the debt. Napariye, napariye, Krishna says, I become indebted. Napariyeham nidavadyasam yujam swasadu kritjam vibhudaya sapivaha yamabhajam durjaya geha shrinkalaha samvichtaya tadva pratyatu sadhuna. Uh -huh. Krishna tells the gopis that I can't repay my debt to you. Your, your love for me is nidavadyasam yujam. It has no desire for your own pleasure. Uh -huh. You're worshipping me, cutting off all, uh, anything personal. Uh -huh. Therefore, he says, uh, Let your own glorious activities be your compensation. That means the bhajan of the gopis. Guru comments, Here Krishna says, I cannot pay back the debt, O gopis. 
You have such love for me that you've broken all rules and regulations, all Vedic regulated principles. At the dead of night, you've come running to me. This is Raghunuga Bhakti. No rules and regulations. So Krishna has become indebted. And to pay back this debt, he came in the form of a sannyasi, a completely different form not bent in three places, no nice curling hair, now his head is shaved, his yellow garment is saffron color, and he's begging for Radha Prem. That is Radha Bhav. He had to come in the sannyas form, otherwise he could not pay back the debt. Now Krishna is moving in that form, which is a combination of Radha and Krishna. Rasaraj Mahabhav. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Gurmaj then finishes up this chapter with Purnamasi ordering Vrindadevi to engage all the Manjaris and decorating the Kunj of Radha and Krishna are going to be, and they make a swing. And Gurmaj comments that this is Manjari Bhav Seva. Our mood is this Manjari Bhav. We just offer service to Radha and Krishna in that mood. And he sings this wonderful song, Radha Krishna Pranamur Jubala Kishore by Narottam Das Thakur, which uh, indicates that uh, my prana, my life, mm -hmm. is to see Radha and Krishna come together. Jivane Marani Gati Arnahi more. In life or in death, I have no other goal than this. I want to see Radha and Krishna sitting together mm -hmm. Kalindira Kuli Keli Kadam Biravan, not in New York, not in Detroit or Paris, but I want to see them in a kunj. Mm -hmm. And I want to, to come to them and I want to bring Gatiya Malatir Mal, I want to bring one garland and put it around both of them. Because I want to see them together. Lalita Vishaka Adi Jata Saki Brinda, Agyaya Koribo Seva Charanadi Brinda. And to do that, I have to take the Agya, the order from Lalita and Vishaka and all the different gopis so that I can render this service. This is a song about Manjari Bhav. Now it's in Das Thakur, he's singing for us. So then Guru Maharaj uh, gives some translation for the song. And um, uh, he then describes another song, Roy Kanu Dui Bashi Lajulana Ratna Manopari. How Radha and Krishna are standing on a swing while the gopis are swinging them and their feet are decorated with golden ankle bells which make a tinkling sound, runa juna, runa juna. On the hand of Shamsunda is a golden bangle. Similarly, on the hand of Radha is a golden armlet. Sham is wearing a garland of forest flowers around his neck and Radharani has around her neck a necklace of pearls. Krishna's holding a lip to his flute, a flute to his lips the sweet singing of the flute is calling Radhe Radhe Esho Esho Radhe. Oh Radhe, Radhe, come, come. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother Yashoda has bound Krishna's curling hair very nicely. Radharani's hair is hanging in a braid. And at that time, all the gopis come and they're dancing and singing the glories of Radha and Krishna. Some are bringing water, some are swinging the swing. Some are fanning the divine couple of the Chamara, some are playing in Radanga, some are playing Kartal, some are clapping their hands. But Lalita Saki is offering Artik. And then he says, When by the mercy of my Guru will I serve Radha and Krishna in the mood of a manjari? So this is a meaning of sannyas. I don't, none of us in this session today have taken sannyas. And uh, Krishna Bala and Prabhu, you can't do that. You have to get permission from your wife first, Chaitanya Prabhu. But if we get sannyas, what is the meaning of that? Uh, there's a mantra that we have. It's a gopi mantra. I, I know that mantra. It's a very simple mantra. All it is is the person chanting is meditating that I'm a gopi. And this indicates manjari bhav. And this sannyas is all about that. And this sannyas means that we're following in the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're not following a Vanashram sannyas, but we're following this Prema sannyas of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this was a desire of my Guru Maharaj. And therefore he shared this very wonderful story, which helps us to understand the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So I want to stop there. I wanted to finish a little earlier than this so we could hear something from everybody. Um, I'm a little confused. I have some idea in our next session to tell you one or two other Leelas just to about the same topic, just to illustrate to the devotees about how widespread this concept, this conception of the Krishna being a sannyasi beggar, because I don't want you to go away thinking, oh, that Gorgavendra Maharaj made something up or he speculated something, but this is a, a concept we find in a number of places in the writings of different acharyas. And it's a very deep concept, and, and we can explore it in a few other different ways for some of the different leelas. I'm thinking to do like that. Vrishabhana Prabhu has some question. He says, is Purva Rag also experienced after Radha and Krishna's first meeting? Of course. Purva Rag, or uh, the beginning of separation before the meeting is there. There's different, there's different steps, different stages, different levels of that. And one is that they've just heard about each other. Another is that they've seen each other from a distance. Another is that they've exchanged glances. And another is maybe they've exchanged some meetings, some messages. Rupa Goswami describes like that also. So there's also some sense of Purva Rag there because there's a sense of a lack of satisfaction, a sense of urgency, a desire to meet. Uh, when they haven't been able to, they haven't yet met to their full satisfaction. Those are all different symptoms of Purva Rag. So, Hare Krishna, thank you, Bhishabhana Prabhu. So I just want to ask the devotees now if anybody has any reflections or comments that you'd like to share with us. Maybe uh, Krishna Balan Prabhu, would you like to share something? No Prabhu, but just thanks for the class. It's really nice. Okay, that's a good reflection. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm happy that, that you got something out of it. We should we should reflect on these things. It's important. And some of them, my grandma, when he would speak some of this, he would oftentimes start off and, and he would look at us. And he would kind of just <laughs> put his hand in his, his head in his hands. And he would tell us that, what I said, I, I'm a mad person. What I want to speak today, you're not going to understand. He said, but I have to speak it, and you should understand it. And he told us sometimes, he said, you just listen. Just hear it. Because we, we need to have this conception. There's so much fear sometimes amongst devotees, that we, amongst it, that we don't want to, we're afraid of hearing something that, that it's improper for me at this stage. And there's some reason for that fear. There's a lot of warnings from our acharyas. But at the same time, we also have uh, these books which are given to us by our acharyas, including Nectar of Devotion, including uh, uh, Krishna book, and we should read these things. Srila Prabhupada wanted us to. But we should not read them in a sentimental kind of way, in an imaginative way. We just simply read them and try to understand them. And the way to understand them, Shri 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 Shuddhana Shavasudeva Kata Ruchi, is by having Kata Ruchi, which comes, Shamaha Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirtana Sevanat, by rendering service to Gurudev, by rendering service to Sadhu. When we render service to the message of Krishna Kata, we render service to the speaker. And by doing that, we get some kata ruchi. So my Guru has also commented that this hearing is a service. It's a service. And I could see it was a service for him. Because he had this thing, and he really, really, really wanted to share it. Srila Prabhupada had this thing, he really, really wanted to share it. And he came to New York City, and he wanted to tell everybody that Krishna is missing Radharani, Radharani is missing Krishna. He wanted to tell them about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to tell them about the beauty of Krishna and Krishna playing his flute and about the gopis and the cowherd boys and about Vrindavan. But he couldn't walk out on the street and tell them that Krishna is blue, that God is blue, and he plays with cows and he has girlfriends. He couldn't do that. But little by little, when people started coming to him and they had faith in him, then he wanted them to hear this. And Srila Prabhupada was very, very pleased when the devotees eagerly heard that. He was looking, where is that person who's eager to hear this? 
So my grandmas oftentimes commented that when we hear, we shouldn't hear for our own personal sense gratification. Again, the same point, Atmavan Manitaja God is there, that we think that, that, that you know, hearing is something like going to the movies where we're, we're doing something for some entertainment. Wow, I really liked that class because it was very entertaining. That's not the purpose of it. We're hearing as a service, a service to Radha Krishna, a service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're going to be pleased. We're trying to understand their mood. A service to Sadhu and Guru, they're pleased when they see that we want to hear from them. So Gurudev, this is the best way to please Gurudev, by sincere hearing. From That's the thing he's looking for, not just lots of money and donations or, or food or someone jumping up and down and singing Jai Gurudev. But he's looking for someone who wants to hear the message that he's got, who's very eager for that. And that person who's very eager to hear that, that person will become Guru himself. Because the qualification to speak is a desire to hear. It's a very, very important thing. So, um, Lalita, would you like to share anything? Any, any prize that you won today? Mother Vananda Prabhu, that's my mom. Um, she's uh -huh. a little on the shy side. Uh -huh. So she might not um, unmute at this stage. Okay. But I must tell that's you right. that we, we, do, we do reflect on your classes together, so it's quite nice. Um, okay. We do chat about it between the two of us. Well, thank you. Do any reflection you have today, Nandarani, you want to share? Um. Nothing much from me, Prabhu, but I just want to, actually, I was reflecting on how nicely you are carrying the message of your Guru Maharaj. Um, I think it's it's actually, it made an impression on me for some reason today, because it's just so clearly our process of Guru Parampara. So thank you. For well, thank keeping, you for that. Um, keeping that, yeah. Thank you. That, that's an encouraging comment. I, I have to be very honest and say something we'll all say. But I, I'm not qualified and I have so many disqualifications. But I have one strong feeling in my heart. And that is, if I'm going to open my mouth, I should try to please my Gurudev. And although inside there may be so many rotten things, but at least intellectually I should know that what is his pleasure, what is, what is it that he speaks? And if I'm going to talk about problems in the world, problems between drastic couples, problems between countries, problems in, in, the, in, in, the, in our society, so many different troubles and things, the solutions that I offer, in, in the language of, of Naranja Maharaj, I like very much how he says this. I've heard him many times tell devotees, he said, I'm sorry, but I only have one solution. I only have one solution, and that is Krishna Kata <laughs> and Krishna Kirtan. That's the only solution. And by speaking like that, we know that he's a follower of Srila Prabhupada because he's giving the solution that Srila Prabhupada gave. And we should be fair, we should be faithful to the message of our Gurudev and always try to remember that. So no matter how unqualified we may find ourselves to be, our only qualification my grandma sometimes said is your only qualification is your disqualification. That we feel I'm not qualified and therefore I should just repeat what I've heard without speculating or changing anything. So thank you, Nandirani. I appreciate that. Makunda, do you want to share anything? Or Viran or, or anybody else here? Uh, Prabhuji, um, you know, you spoke about anger before. I was just reflecting on a, a pastime. You know, like here you have uh, Krishna and Radharani. Radharani gets angry at Krishna and so forth. But sometimes, you know, the Lord also wants this anger because he relishes this anger. And I read a pastime recently on uh, Lord Chaitanya. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a book called Prema Vivarta, Transformations of Anger. And it speaks about Satya Bhama and Rukmini. Whereas Rukmini, when she's angry at Krishna, she keeps it within herself. But Satya Bhama, she doesn't keep it within herself. She lets it out. You know? She's outspoken. 
And in Lord Chaitanya's pastime, Jagadananda is such a bummer. And at one stage, Lord Chaitanya wanted to relish this anger of Jagadananda. So he went to visit Jagadananda and he made Jagadananda very angry. You know, so angry. <laughs> and then at the height of this anger, Mahaprabhu kindly asked him, uh, Jagadananda, I'm hungry. Will you please cook something for me? <laughs> so Jagadananda, while busy cooking, he's angry. And Mahaprabhu is sitting and looking at him and just relishing his anger because he wanted this anger. He wanted to experience it again. You know, so this is like a different type of anger, which is so hard to explain sometimes. <laughs> so that's one thing I wanted to say. And then another thing is, uh, I've read an article on Gaur Govinda Maharaj speaking about Prema Vachitya. And he says that in Raja Leela, there are two uh, personalities. One is Radha, one is Krishna. They are separate personalities. And he describes this river, a river flowing in one direction. And on one side of the embankment is separation. The other side of the embankment is union. And he says that these two don't meet. But then he goes on to qualify, the said, Rupa Goswami says, that in very rare circumstances, these two embankments come together. And when these two embankments come together, that is Lord Chaitanya. That is Prema Vachitya. And Prema Vachitya is nothing but Lord Chaitanya. Nothing else but Lord Chaitanya. And I thought that was such a deep, <laughs> powerful thing to say, you know, because here we have two containers coming into one container, and I can only but imagine what Mahaprabhu must be going through, dealing with all of that union and separation in one body. I mean, it's it's something else, you know, altogether. Amazing, you know, it's really amazing. Thank you very much, Mukunda. It was really beautiful. <laughs> and I, I want to comment also. Um, Mahaprabhu sometimes said different things to different devotees. So to Kanai Kunti, he once said, you're Nanda Maharaj. But we don't hear anywhere else that, that uh, Kanai Kunti is Nanda Maharaj. But he said like that, it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And he told Ma that Jagannanda Pandit, you're, like, you're such a bama. Just like sometimes someone may say, you're the devil. <laughs> it doesn't mean Mukunda Prabhu is the devil. But it means that, that maybe you've really annoyed someone <laughs> and they see you like the devil. They see the qualities of that person or something in you. Uh, so just, just, just a brief comment there because that this, this subject would come up if we start going through Lalita Madhav about such a Bama and about Jagadananda Pandit and some things. I would just be cautious about it. It's a very big thing. Thank you very much for sharing those points. And Guru Maharaj also commented that Mahaprabhu is two opposites in one container. He's both union and separation. They're opposite things. How can they be together? But they are in Gora Lila. Thank you very much, Mukunda. I really appreciate you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. And uh, let's see. Uh, Nam Sankirtamba, would you want to share anything? Um, Looks like your power came back on again. Kind of, yes, it's getting on and off. Um, well, I had a few, few things. Well, first, I also wanted to, to appreciate one, one point when you said that Krishna Kata, although we all know this point, that Krishna Kata is not a form of entertainment, it's a service. And uh, it's kind of very, uh, you, know, you only slept for three hours today and you still given the Kata in so enthusiastically, and you can see how you. You've been transformed as you would go into the past time. So this is a really wonderful example of um, how Krishna Gata is really a service. It's not just a form of entertainment. One, one thing I wanted to ask is, although it's, it's really theoretical, but you said that uh, the mantra for, um, for sannyasi is a, it's a Gopi mantra. So how... <laughs> And just in general, you spoke about this also, but in general, how this concept of sannyas works within the institution, does it mean that everyone who is <laughs> sannyas? Oh, boy. Um, and, 
And another side of this question is that a person, if someone is cultivating some different uh, form of relationship with Krishna, and uh, when they take sannyas, are they given some different type of mantra? Or... I know when, when the institution comes into place, everything becomes very difficult to kind of explain. But in just a few words, what would you say? Yeah, I'll say something a little controversial. That I, that I often tell to the sannyasis in my kind of uh, impudent way, <laughs> that Maharaj I said sometimes I, I would rather be a grihastha because I only have one wife, but if I took sannyasa, it means I'm married to the whole institution. And it, it's a kind of artificial thing because the sannyasi by nature has to be independent. Otherwise, how can they preach and things? But at the same time, within our society, they're so dependent and they're so watched all the time and, and, and it's a very, very difficult thing. But at the same time, let's, let's bear in mind that this is Krishna's arrangement. This is Prabhupada's arrangement. And there's some reason for it. It may be difficult both for the sannyasi and for the followers of the sannyasi. I feel terrible sometimes when I see how the sannyasis, we treat them like, like they're five-year-old children or something. We have to watch them always and give them instructions and like this and that. It's painful for the devotees also sometimes, but I see that as part of Krishna's arrangement and as part of the drama in our society. And the sannyasis, they, they have to tolerate that and they have to go on for the purpose of, of the society. So uh, we, today we were at the Gambira and whenever we go to the Gambira, I always remember Radhanath Maharaj and Nam Sankar Tampa was a disciple of Radhanath Maharaj. And I, we speak in the Gambira about the importance of learning to live alone in the crowd. An example to me always is Radhanath Maharaj and how I see uh, on Yatras when he's got five or six, seven thousand devotees. And you see him in the midst of all these adoring followers. He's completely aloof and he's absorbed in some internal thing. He's alone, although he's in the crowd. And so I, I see this principle in Jagannath Puri, as we oftentimes comment, we see the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem. It's a, a schoolroom where Mahaprabhu was teaching us how to develop, to do bhajan, develop Braj Prem. Each one of the different Tirtha stallers is a classroom in that school. And the Jagannath Mandir represents organized religion. And as much as we all like to complain about it, and everybody does, <laughs> from the sannyasis to the new bhaktas to the congregational members, and from America to New Zealand and China and Japan and, and Russia and everywhere else, everybody complains about it. Uh, at the same time, it's necessary. We need organized religion. The Jagannath Mandir has a lot of problems also. They, did, they weren't allowing Haridas Thakur inside. Haridas Thakur installed the deities. He's Lord Brahma. <laughs> they wouldn't allow Rupa and Sanatana Goswami inside the temple. They had politics, they had all kinds of problems. But it's necessary for, for ordinary people to, to, to give some opportunity for them to come and hear about Krishna. So it's an austerity that we tolerate. But to be able to survive that austerity, we need to have a Gambira. And the Gambira is a private place not far from the Jagannath Mandir where Mahaprabhu was staying with just one or two like-minded devotees, Sripadamada and Roy Ramananda, Lalita and Vishaka Sakis. And comparing these two and seeing the kind of uh, tension, in a sense, spiritual transcendental tension between these two places, and one which represents isolation and, and intimacy, and the other a very public thing, uh, we come up with this principle, we should learn to live alone in the crowd. We live in the crowd, but at the same time, we need to learn the art of living alone. And so this is what I see about the sannyasis in this institution. And my grandma, as an example, really suffered. And I can tell you historically, culturally, that, that the devotees who are from Indian bodies, when they join this society, you can hear Bhakti Charumai speak about it in different recordings. I've heard Lokanath Maharaj speak about it in different uh, early Indian body sannyasis, it was hard for them because it was mostly like an American mafia <laughs> who were controlling ISKCON and all of a sudden you've got these Indian sannyasis, so it was especially hard for them. But my grandma just tolerated that. And he went on and, and, and he's not, 
again, the, we have these, these kind of uh, fantasy ideas, what it means to be a sannyasi, what it means to be this or that. We should put that aside and take up Srila Prabhupada's desire, what it means to be a sannyasi. It means we give up everything. Even we give up uh, the idea of, of being a, a great sadhu who's just traveling around in a detached way. And instead, we're, we're dealing with grihastha couples and trying, trying to counsel them and dealing with problems in the GBC and trying to deal with things in that way and, and taking on those kind of headaches, that's another kind of renunciation. And Srila Prabhupada wanted that. That's my personal reflection on, on that thing, Nam Sankirtan Prabhu. Is it, uh, you have any reflections yourself on that? Anything you want to respond with? Um, yeah, I really like this topic about Gambira and learning how to be alone in the crowd. And actually, I, I remember I have fond, fond memories of you speaking about that and actually in Gambira. So, uh, but just, uh, just this other part of the, uh, the, the technicality, that's when the, the sannyasis are given this Gopi mantra. So is it regardless of their internal aspiration or how does that, how does that work? Well, yeah, what if someone's into Sakya Rush, perhaps, right? Or somebody maybe they just really, really want to be a peacock and Gora Lee and Krishna Lilo, or whatever it is, you know, a tree <laughs> or something. <laughs> but still, um, they can meditate on the gopis and that'll purify them. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't see it as being exclusive from each other. I would comment, though, that if we study deeper the Anarpita Chiryam Chirat verse written by Srup Dhamada Goswami, which I think is the fourth verse, as I recall, in Krishna Daskabra Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Surati uh, Subhakti Shriyam, that's Manjari Bhav, which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. He didn't come to give. In, in our Gaudiya line, it's an interesting point. I have spoke with different scholars, including our Fakir Mohan Prabhu, who, who did extensive research going to all the different groups of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And in all the groups, nobody teaches about Sakya Ras, first of all. There's no groups, even, even in the line of Gauri Das Pandit. And that they, they, they have something officially, but they also speak about Manjari Bhav. <laughs> because that, that's the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And although there is one or two books which speak something about Sakya Ras, still is permeated with discussions about Srimati Radharani and Manjari Bhav. And within those lines, the disciplic lines in Gauri Das Pandit's line, they have Manjari Swaroops also, <laughs> not just in the form of cowherd boys. That, that's my thoughts on that, on Krishna. Uh, okay, anybody else want to share anything? Viren Prabhu, you there? You like to, or, or, I'm sorry, Brenda Devi, you had something. Brenda Devi's here in the room. She's going to have to ask Krishna Kun to translate for her. So you can speak real loud in Russian. I don't, well, Nam Sankirtan Prabhu will be able to understand you. He's a Russian speaker. And you'll be able to hear it on this mic if you speak loudly. And Krishna Kun will translate. Speak loud. <coughs> Спасибо большое за глубокую лекцию. Я сегодня поняла новое значение слова «брахмачари», «кришна брахмачари». Для меня это было открыто. You give as an understanding for me Krishna Brahman and Acharya. And don't understand how Gopi когда они хотели перейти, и мой друг вас сама не сказал, скажите Кришна Брахмачари, и Муна пропустит. И Гопи улыбались, потому что они не понимали, как Кришна Брахмачари. Кришна Кан, can you? Can you... I'm trying to understand the question. Okay. Uh, нет, когда друг вас сама не сказал, скажите Гопи, и Муна пропустит вас, когда вы скажете Кришна Брахмачари. И они тогда не понимали, почему Кришна Брахмачари. Но действительно, если Браман и Ачария, новое значение для меня сейчас открылось. Если, если я правильно 
uh, where the gopis are supposed to say uh, Krishna is a brahmachari. She didn't understand why why Krishna is a brahmachari. Okay. Uh, but now again, even besides what you said, that brahmachari means brahman and achara, and how Krishna is acting in this way, so the meaning of this word became more clear. Uh-huh. Yeah, Bra- Krishna just des- des- describes in the Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Sochati Nakamsati Sama Sarvesha Bhuta Shu Madhvaktam Labhate Param. That um, what is this this Brahma Bhuta platform? Na Sochati Na Kamsati. They're not hankering, they're not lamenting. It's not that Krishna is lusty over the bodies of the gopis. And because he's not, he's a brahmachari. Although externally he's dancing with all these ladies and he's having very intimate, loving relationships with them. But in actuality, because brahmachari iti brahman acha, that, that uh, brahmachari means someone who's situated in brahman. Na sochiti na kangsiti, sama sarve shibhute, she treats everyone equally. Okay? Good. I'm glad that helps a little bit. And uh, Viren Prabhu, are you alive? Are you there? I'm, I'm here, Prabhu. Um, you want to share any thoughts? Anything you like? You win any prizes today? <laughs> win any prizes? No, no. <laughs> um, I think there's just one thing, Prabhu. You know, when you're talking about the past time, I, I forget the actual comment that you made. Uh, entered the kunj. Uh, but the one thing that stuck out to me was the, the past time we, and I, you're going to have to correct me. When Krishna went to extol and show the world the, the glories of Srimati Radharani, her unique position, and he feigned uh, being ill. And I think it was Purnamasi, uh, I think, that said, you know, anyone who can carry this pot that has a hundred holes and can take it and fill it, um, and then they have to come back. So it spoke about chastity and purity and um, someone whose mind doesn't deviate for a second from the object of their love. Um, and yeah, sorry, that was, that was the one thing that, that came to mind when you were talking about, you know, Krishna entering the uh, or, or the, the grove now when it was Srimati Radharani was. And I was just thinking about how unique um, her position is and how Krishna actually extolled it through that pastime. Yeah, and therefore it, it's described by our Acharyas too that, that uh, Jari Gorana Hoita, if Goranga Mahaprabhu had not come, came on Idarita, what would all of us have done? How would we ever known about the glories of Radharani? Before the time of, of Goranga Mahaprabhu coming, we didn't know about Radharani. That's a very, very deep point. And it's a very important point in, in, in Embankment of Separation, this book, that this book is meant to help us understand Radharani. <clears throat> Garanga Mahaprabhu is coming to help us understand Radharani, because, and, and he's doing that by coming to understand her himself. <laughs> he also can't understand. And though him trying to understand Radharani, he can help us to understand Radharani. And he can help us to get that Svabhakti Shriyam, that, that hot topmost type of bhakti, which is service to the sakis, service to the, the being a maidservant to the, 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 uh, the sakis of Srimati Radharani. So, thank you, Prabhuji. I appreciate that. Okay, anybody else with any reflections or comments? Vrishabhani Prabhu, did you have anything else? I'm fine, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Nice to hear you guys. Oh, and Chaitanya Prabhu is here also. Should we let Chaitanya Prabhu say something? I'm good, thanks for the interesting time. Good. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Chaitanya Prabhu. I, I really appreciate it. I know uh, you guys are doing so much. I, I see you know, taking care of your family, you're working a job, you're helping with the mission in South Africa, you're doing so many things, and it's very, very inspiring. I'm just, I just feel like a lazy hippie, you know, <laughs> who's avoided all kinds of responsibilities like that, and I'm just, just here doing nothing. I, I'm, I'm humbled. In your situation. Anything, anybody else here in the room want to share anything? Okay. All right, so go ahead and stop there. And we're not so late. Um, I'm, uh, is it, how does everybody feel about finishing at this time?
This is a quick question. Is this okay for everybody? Yeah, this is a good time for It's okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I, I think you, I should probably give about a half an hour for reflections from everybody. I, I, I think that that's required. I, I, I was going to try to do it in 15 minutes, but it's really not enough time. And I, and I personally like very much. Um, any comments and reflections from anybody? How do you feel about staying on with this chapter? And let me fluff it out a little bit more from different perspectives, kind of historically and to literature. Or should we just go on to the next chapter? Any reflections from anybody about that? It's more fleshing, bro. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's, it's amazing, uh, honestly speaking, bro, it's amazing going through all the depths of all these, um, all these elements and really analyzing all the different moods and uh, intertwined elements that's there. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah, and let's just be peaceful. Let's not freak out about it. As I mentioned before, when we printed this story that we just told today, one devotee wrote to us and unsubscribed from the Bindu. <laughs> he said, it's too high for me. I, I can't. I can't have this thing. We don't have to become frightened, or freaked out about it. We should just listen in a sober way. And, and it, it is nice. It's nice to the heart. It, it's okay to like it. <laughs> it's legal <laughs> to relish it. And we just want to hear it and we want to try to understand it. And by being sincerely, want, by sincerely wanting to try to understand it, Radha Krishna Guru Dev, Guranga Mahaprabhu will see that sincerity. And that's what we can offer them. And that ultimately, that that's the, the service that we can do. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop there, and, and uh, we'll get to see you guys again next week. Thank you all very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, samadhi bindi ki jai, Gopreem Nandi Hari Hari Bo, Vanchi Hari Hari Bo, Chha Kripa Sindhu Chha Patika.